Hello, my name is Valerie Lewis. I'm a researcher at the Institute of Public Health at the University of Heidelberg in Germany. And today I will tell you about climate change and infectious diseases, in particular climate sensitive diseases. And I will take the example of dengue, which is a viral illness, which is transmitted by a mosquito. So first of all, what are climate sensitive diseases? Well, as the name tells, they are diseases that are uh, affected directly by uh, climatic factors. And those main climatic factors are, there are three of them. It's temperature, precipitation, that is rainfall, and humidity. Let me give you some example of uh, climate sensitive diseases. They can be vector-borne diseases such as malaria or dengue, which are transmitted by mosquitoes, or Lyme disease that are transmitted by ticks. And those vector-borne disease are transmitted not directly from human to humans, but through a vector, which is an insect, a tick, or uh, another animal. They can also be foodborne diseases or waterborne diseases that are often transmitted through bacteria. Through which mechanisms um, is the transmission happening? So when we look at the temperature, often when a lot of uh, biological mechanisms occur more rapidly when the temperature is higher. Why? Well, the pathogen, so that can be the virus or the parasite, often develops more rapidly with higher temperature. The vector itself, so that can be the mosquito or the tick, also develops more rapidly uh, with hotter temperature and is more active. So we'll feed more, rapid, uh, more often on the host, the human being, for example. All this implies that the transmission will happen within a shorter period of time. And the, therefore, the probability of disease transmission is going to increase. Related to temperature, it also means that there is an optimal range of temperature. Um, there is a minimum temperature above which the transmission can occur and often a an maximum temperature. And if temperature is above 40 degrees, for example, mosquitoes will begin to die off and actually the transmission will be reduced. So when it comes to precipitation, um, it is crucial because precipitation, rainfall, creates uh, the habitat for the vector. That is, the presence of water is a place where the, the mosquito, for example, can breed and develop. So without water, often no vector, no transmission. Um, also, the timing of, of precipitation is important. After a heavy rain, perhaps the larvae are washed away. But if um, after heavy rain, the water remains for two weeks, then the larvae can develop and can support transmission. To the third factor, humidity, is often important for the survival of the adult stage, mosquito, for example. Now I will tell you more specifically about dengue. As I say, dengue is transmitted by uh, a mosquito. There are two main mosquitoes transmitted dengue, the Aedes aegypti and the Aedes albopictus, also known as the Asian tiger mosquito. For the transmission of dengue, uh, Aedes aegypti is more competent, is more effective, if you wish, at transmitting the disease, and is much associated with urban locations. Dengue is actually a very complex disease, and many factors come to the efficacy of the transmission. So how do climatic factors influence dengue transmission? Well, first through temperature. Because with higher temperature, the larvae, the immature stage, develop more rapidly, which means that the adults emerge uh, earlier than at lower temperature. The adult itself will bite more often with higher temperature, and the virus will replicate more rapidly. So with higher temperature, the dengue will be transmitted uh, more rapidly and more often. Um, of course, there is a maximum temperature 
over 40 degrees, then uh, the mosquito uh, will not survive as much, and that will decrease the um, dengue transmission. Humidity plays also an important role um, in the survival of the adult mosquitoes and how often the mosquito feeds. Rainfall is also very important because it provides the habitat uh, where the, legs, the eggs can be laid and the larvae can develop. Other factors are important uh, for dengue transmission. Uh, they are, of course, the, the, the virus, the virus itself, its virulence, the population's immunity, uh, if the population have seen viruses before or not, um, the human behavior, does water needs to be stored, and uh, in that case, water storage can, prefer, can provide perfect um, habitat for the mosquito to breed and reproduce and transmit the disease, and human mobility. But also two very important factors are urbanization and globalization. And urbanization, because it brings population of humans in, in close area, which makes it perfect for the Aedes mosquito, which is well adapted to human population to breed and transmit the disease. And globalization, because it has spread, contributed to spread the vector, the mosquito worldwide, and also the virus. And if we look at the map um, provided by Professor Gubler, and that compare where uh, the mosquitoes were spread uh, in the 1930s and nowadays, in this case in South America, we see that in the 21st century we reach again the level of the 1930s. So the vector itself is now uh, very much widespread worldwide. And here we see a, a map uh, showing where the two uh, species of mosquitoes are spread nowadays. And we see that they covered most of the tropics and subtropical areas of the world, which put about half of the world population at risk of dengue transmission. If we look a bit more closely at Europe, um, and in particular in France, we see that in the later uh, years, actually the, the mosquitoes itself has invaded all the south of France. And as far as the virus, uh, we now observed a few uh, autochthonous cases, which means locally transmitted cases, um, so which means we are not at the epidemic level yet, but they are sporadic cases that may have the potential to reach epidemic levels, especially if the temperature uh, remain higher in, in the region. So this gives, uh, this makes dengue a major challenge for the 21st century. Why is that? Well, there is still no vaccine. And as long as there is no vaccine against dengue, it will remain a challenge. Well, what else do we have on the preventive side? Well, we have vector control, mosquito control. Um, unfortunately, this is often expensive, labor intensive, and not very effective. We can develop new tools, such as, for example, early warning system. And because dengue is a climate sensitive disease, it can actually be modeled based on uh, temperature, precipitation, and humidity. And a few studies have, have done just that and have allowed to um, model dengue occurrence and a way to forecast uh, dengue occurrence based on climatic factors. And as a consequence, to give an early warning system to public health authorities to help prepare the populations and the health system. In conclusion, how can we adapt to the challenge of dengue in the 21st century? We can continue to improve the vector control. We can continue to look for vaccines. And we can develop new tools, such as early warning system, based on uh, the modeling of climatic uh, factors. And um, we know that um, dengue here provides, in a way, a good example of other climate sensitive disease, which we'll have to face uh, in relation to climate change and to which we have to respond and adapt in the 21st century. Thank you.